So today we're going to cover system D. And system D is a lot of things, but primarily and perhaps most interestingly to us developers is that system D takes the place of something like upstart or system five, basically your server init processes. So for example, right now I'm on CentOS 7 and that has system D out of the box. The same thing with Red Hat 7. Debian 7 has it, but it doesn't come out of the box enabled, I don't believe. Ubuntu doesn't yet have it, but probably will in upcoming versions. But a lot of distributions are using it, and so it's really good to learn. Now, System D does a lot of things, like it can reboot your server, it can run containers, it does a lot of stuff, but we're just going to concentrate on services and services and unit files. So these services and unit files are the things that take over or replace upstart configuration files or system five shell scripts that are responsible for handling processes. So let's just see how this works. This is gonna be very much like the upstart video if you have already seen that. The upstart video just goes through creating a web listener in Go and then making sure that process is running at certain times. So I'm on CentOS 7. This has Selenix and I believe Selenix is running right now. Right, so it's enabled and enforcing. So we might run into this stuff with Selenix, not letting us listen on an HTTP port, but we'll find out. So I'm in the opt directory, and here I have a file listen.go, and this is just a useless web listener. It just returns hi there for any web request it receives, and it listens on port 8181 on all network interfaces. So let's just build that. Oops, go build. Then we get a binary listen, and we can try this out. And that looks like it's listening. Let's try out Safari. So before, this couldn't work. And great, it's there. So we don't have to do any Selenix stuff to open up any ports. All right, so the next thing I want to do is just create the configuration, the systemd unit file, it's called. And this one will run this listen command and keep it running if it fails. So CentOS doesn't have a system user out of the box that's good for web stuff. So what I'm going to do is just create one. And users of Ubuntu or Debian will be pretty familiar with this. I'm just going to create the user named www.data. And I'm going to make this as a system user. So R marks it as a system user. Capital M says do not create a home directory. And I'm setting the shell as bin false so this user can't be used to log in. It won't have a shell to log in as. And oh, I already made it when I'm testing stuff in this video, so let's see that. I'm going to cat etsy password, and we'll grep for www. And we can see it exists, and it's a system user. Its user ID and group ID is below 1,000, which is just a general thing in Linux. System users aren't really different from other users other than kind of administratively. We can see that they have a lower group ID, typically lower than 1,000, and they're typically used for system administration rather than actual users who log in. All right, so we have a system user, we have a web listener. We can turn this web listener on, but we want something to monitor it and make sure that process stays up through errors and through reboots and that kind of thing. So where are systemd files? Are we gonna find them in etsy systemd? And in here, we have a bunch of stuff, but if we go into the system directory, we'll see more directories, a few services defined, and we can see multi-user target, and we'll just go to that. And you can see we have a bunch of services here, like cron cloud init, uh, syslog, ssh, that kind of stuff. And they're symlinked. They're symlinked to the user lib systemd, almost the same location. But here is where we actually are going to make most of our services and define them. And then when they get enabled, they get symlinked to the Etsy systemd system whatever directory. So we are now in this user lib systemd system directory. Let's create a service. We're going to create a unit file. And this unit file is going to be something.service. So let's say vim go web.service. And I'm running as root, so I'm not using the sudo command, but you should if you're not as the root user. All right, I'll just paste this in, and this is basic. It's close to upstart configurations in that the configurations are fairly easy. We once again have a description under the unit, and it's kind of an INI style thing here. So we have a description. I'm just going to call it webhook. I want it to run not as user deployer. That's from another example, but www.data. I'm going to run this as group www.data, restart on failure. So this is going to restart on failure. So essentially, if this process fails, if there's an error and it stops, 
it's going to get restarted. And then we just have exec start. So this is just the thing to kick off the process that this is going to monitor. Now this is user bin node. I don't want that. This is going to be exec start opt uh, listen. So we just want it to run this listener that we created with Go. Now wanted by multi-user target. This is similar to upstart when we define when to start and stop a process. So in there we started on file system or certain run levels. Here we're defining a run level, but it's not a numerical one. And you'll typically mostly want to use multi-user target. So multi-user is when the server hits multi-user mode. It's when network is on, what is when users can log in. And it's typically a run level. The server hits kind of late when it's booting up. And it just means that most stuff is available to use. So opt listen is going to be able to listen on networks and run as user www data because we have waited for the multi-user run level to be reached on the server. And you'll notice as I was talking, I also fixed a little syntax issue here. All right, so let's save and quit that. Now we can enable it. So systemctl is the controller for systemd, and you can use that to do most things. You can even use it to reboot the server and all that kind of thing, but we're just gonna use it for unit file stuff. And the unit file, once again, is just the name of the services we're creating for it to manage. So if you can scroll down when you do the help menu, you can see under unit commands, we have list unit, list socket, start, stop, reload, all the usual stuff for process management. So let's do systemctl. I'm gonna enable the one we just created called GoWeb. And you can see that it's just a symlink, ln-s. So from the user lib systemd system, the GoWeb service file we made, symlink that to Etsy systemd, blah, 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 multi-user target wants, the directory, on which any multi-user service should go. And it's just called Go Web Service there as well. Then we check out the status, Go Web. And we can see active failed, it's just not on. It doesn't really mean there's been an error. And some other commands we can see is enabled. It's enabled, great. You can do list unit files, which is gonna be a big list. So let's actually grep for Go Web. Great, it's there and it's enabled. So I can do systemctl start Go Web and then status, and it should be running, and it is, great. And we can also do sudo service go web status. And this is just an alias that will go to systemd, and if there's nothing in systemd, it'll check upstart, nothing in upstart, it'll check system5, depending on what's installed on the server. The service command is just kind of a very handy tool. If you don't know what specifically the system is using, you can just use the service command, and it'll figure out where the service is defined. And you can see it says redirecting to bin system CTL because it knows that system D is being used. All right, let's make sure this is actually running. It is still running, perfect. Now if we stop it, that does actually stop. So we have confirmed that it is actually doing its job. Now that's basically it. The last thing I'm gonna show you is just some more examples of stuff you can pop into a unit file. So let's say user lib system D, System, uh, I'm just going to call this example.service. So once again, we have a description, and we can say after. So this can be defined to only be started after other services or other targets, like multi-user target, but there's other ones available too. And of course, you can find multiple as well. So we can do type. Simple is the one that is used by default, but there's also forking and one shot and some other examples. This is similar to telling upstart that it should expect a process that forks or demonizes or something like that. But in our case, we're not doing anything fancy like that. So it's just type simple. You can define the user and group once again. Here we're back to deployer, but that'd be www.data in our example. Working directory is just the directory that it should change into before it runs. Restart and failure, once again, just one to restart this uh, listener. Environment variables, we can set multiple here. So environment equals, and then var1 equals whatever, var2, something else. Because there's a space here, these are in quotes. Or you can set an environment file, which is just a path to a file that loads in variables. And then some more stuff here. So exec start pre is anything to run before it starts the service. Exec start, once again, is actually running the service. Exit start post is what to run after starting the service. And there's the same stuff for stopping and restarting, in fact. So there's a bunch of things you can run before and after the actual service is started. And then once again, we have wanted by multi-user target, which is the same. We want this to run when the server reaches the multi-user run level. And that's basically it. 
there's a lot of analogies to Upstart. It's kind of the same in terms of functionality. Once again, if you want something more advanced that does things like handling how many processes to spin up of a service like the listener or has some more advanced configuration like monitoring and alerting, you might want to use something like Monit or Supervisor or CircusD. There's a lot of options, but SystemD, because it comes with a lot of our servers and definitely it will be coming with more of our servers in the future, is definitely something that you should know as a basic tool in your toolbox.